Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, one of the purposes of this channel is to support home education in the science, especially for homeschoolers. So today I want to introduce you to a new tool that you can use to help with some of your science education. And that is the accelerometer in your iPhone. So for example, I have a photograph on my iPhone here. When I turn it to the side, the iPhone automatically knows which way is down and changes it from portrait to landscape. Well, how does it do that? Well, let's find out. Today we'll go over the accelerometers that are in your iPhone and Android. We'll see how they work and how we can use them to do experiments at home. So cue up the music and let's go. Now the accelerometer in your iPhone is actually what they call a micro machine. And it's basically designed like this. So what we have is a two part machine. This red area is attached to the circuit board in your iPhone at these four points right here. And this bar on either side is made of a flexible material, which is conductive to electricity, and it's attached to this center bar. These green bars are attached to the circuit board. So what happens is if you put an acceleration on this phone, this bar, which is weighted, will be pulled in that direction on these springs. And as a result, these little crossbars will be closer to the green bars on one side and further away on the other. And that changes the capacitance of the circuit. The phone senses that this bar is being moved over this direction. Likewise, if you have an acceleration going in the opposite direction, the bar is pushed this way, and these little crossbars become closer on this side. Again, this changes the capacitance and senses that the bar is being pushed this way. Now there's an app program that you can get for an iPhone, and there's probably something similar for an Android, where you can read the readings off of these sensors. Now there's a set of three of them because each sensor only reads one axis. So you need one for the x-axis, you need one for the y-axis, and you need one for the z-axis. So let's go ahead and go over this a little bit, and then we're going to test it. So here's my setup. Here's my iPad sitting on my desk in my office. Now I've got a program on there called GeForce Meter that will read the output from that accelerometer in all three axes. If you look at the long edge of the iPad that's on the ground right now, you will see that that is the y-axis. If you look at the direction of gravitational force going straight down perpendicular to that, that's the x-axis. The x-axis goes along this short edge here. Now the z-axis goes from the front of the iPad to the back. We have an iPad here and we've got the little button on the bottom edge. Now if we look at this short edge, let's call that the x-axis. We'll call the long edge the y-axis, and front to back, we're going to call that the z or z-axis. Okay, now that we've set up some uh, directions on the iPad, we can make a coordinate system from that. We can have an x, a y, and a z-axis. The only other thing that we have to do is decide what's plus and what's minus. Let's go ahead and make down along the y-axis negative, left along the x-axis negative, and back along the z-axis negative. Okay, so here's our iPad and it's laying on the desk. This is towards me, this is towards the far side of the desk. It's laying flat, so the force that is acting on this iPad is moving in this direction, going straight down through the iPad, and that is in the z-axis. And since it is going in a negative direction, we're getting negative 1 g. When we rotate the iPad so that it's like this, and it is going straight up, straight in the front to back Z axis, what we're going to do is we're going to have all of the force of gravity going straight down this way, and that is the X axis, and it's in a negative direction. If we were 
to lay the iPad on this edge right here. Gravity acceleration would be going in that direction and we should see 1G in the plus direction. So let's go ahead and try that out and see what we have. Okay, so right now I've got the iPad laying flat on the desk and uh, the button is to my right and the long axis is facing me, but again, it's laying flat on the desk. So we see the Z axis, which is the front to back axis, is reading negative 1G. And there's a total up in the white, white line up there of about 1G that is acting on the iPad. Now, this is what we would expect. Because it's going from the front to the back, that's in a negative direction on the Z axis. So it's reading the full force of gravity as a negative 1G. Now you notice up here that the green line, which is the Y axis, is reading zero. But the red line actually has a little acceleration due to gravity on it. What do you think that would be? It's because the iPad is slightly tilted due to the case. So if I bring the, it a little bit more level, you see how the red line goes straight back up to zero? And then if I bring it down, even though it's only about a tenth of an inch, you can see that that makes a difference. Let's bring this up and put it resting on the long axis and see if we can kind of keep it more or less straight up and down and it's resting on my level desk. So again, we have 1G total in the white line. If we look at the green line, which is the Y axis, it's resting on my level desk. So it's reading zero. And in the Z axis, which is the front to back axis, it's a little bit off. So what we need to do is we need to kind of square that up a little bit. Now it's completely vertical and you see the green and the blue lines are covering each other. X axis is reading negative one, the force of gravity is going from right to left in the negative direction. Now, if we tilt the iPad like that, you see how the acceleration is different? Can we use that to calculate the degree of tilt? Let's have a look. Now, if we look at our numbers here, we see in the x-axis, we have a negative 0 0.86, and in the z-axis, we have a negative 0 0.52. So we'll go ahead and take our numbers, and we'll put it in the right triangle calculator from Math Portal. So we have leg A, which is in the x-axis, will be 0 0.86, and leg B, which is in the z-axis, 0 0.51, and we're going to solve for angle A. Let's see what it comes up to. 59.33 degrees. Now let's compare that to reality. Now again, not absolutely perfect, but considering it's kind of a crude measurement that we're doing and we're just using a roofer's square, I think that's pretty close, don't you? Now that you understand a little better how the accelerometers work on your phone, why don't you go ahead and measure the acceleration acting on your phone while you're holding it and then drop it onto a pillow and see what happens to the acceleration. Put it on a merry-go-round. See where the accelerations take you. Now, another interesting experiment that's very easy to do with your parents would be to hang a, a fishing sinker from your rear view mirror and get a helium balloon and put it next to it. Get your accelerometer on and have your parent speed up the car and then slow it down. See which direction the balloon moves and what direction the sinker moves and then see what the acceleration acting on the phone is. See if you can figure out why it does what it does. So in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Put a couple comments about some experiments you do with this in the comments of this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.